we moved to northern France, to Brittany, eight years ago now, not long after George was born. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Claire, my wife, was stressed out with her work, nursing. We wanted a bigger house and a nice garden for the kids to run round in, which we could never afford in the UK. People said there was plenty of work in France for builders like me, doing stuff for all the other expat Brits. There was. Converting old farmhouses, sheets for holiday lets and stuff. But then the credit crunch came and all the work dried up. We got totally skimped. And I used to sit in the house all day getting more and more stressed out. I've always been a worrier, but that time, wondering what was going to happen to us, tipped me over the edge. I felt worse and worse inside, but I couldn't tell anyone. Not even Claire. I had no idea at the time. I was suffering from major depression. Just feel so miserable today. I could be doing some work here at home. This place. What a folly, eh? I could be plastering. There's bags of plaster in the shed. What if we have to sell in our arena? Who's going to buy it like this, are they? The bank will take it off us and throw us out. Then where will we go? We can't even afford the ferry home. The credit card's right up to the limit. Dad always said I had no planning department in my head. It's like I've learnt nothing in my life. Need to get out there, banging on doors. I haven't got the... I don't know. I've lost all my... I've lost it. My head's all muzzy today. I haven't felt this bad since I was a kid. I feel like crying. It's ridiculous. Other people have got their mates at a time like this. Where are all my mates? I've got no mates. All my football mates, old school mates, work mates, down the pub. Just didn't stay in touch, did I? My own bloody fault. Got what I deserve. Nothing. Truth is, nobody here wants me to work for them. French don't want some foreign bastard bodging up their houses for them. The Brits have all gone home. Face it. I wouldn't give me a job if I came to the door. I don't shave. I look haggard. I mumble, the van's a mess. I haven't even washed a van. Bone idle, that's me. Never stuck at anything. Left school too soon. Gave up my apprenticeship. Gave up working for Dad. Gave up my football. Worthless. That's what. Bloody worthless. This is definitely the worst day yet. What's the time? Claire will be back with the kids soon. Miss them all day and the moment they come through the door I can't stop shouting at them. Not enough love to give, that's my trouble. Why can't I be one of those nice dads who never shouts? If 
Feels like I've got a big rock on me today. Truth is, I add nothing to this family. I used to bring in a bit of money, but now I can't even do that. I don't help anyone. I never help the kids with their homework. I never help Claire with anything. I don't make anyone happy. I just take away from them. I shout and I make them cry. And I smoke away our money and knock all the plaster off the walls. What have I given them but grief? If I wasn't here, they'd be better off. Maybe they'd miss me for a day or two, but it'd be like a weight lifting off them. No one shouting and panicking about money. Claire would just be calm and kind, like she always is. She worked something out. Take the kids back to England. They'd manage. Simple, really. Things would actually be better without me. That afternoon, before Claire and the kids came home, I got all the pills out of the bathroom cupboard and the half bottle of scotch we had and went into a field nearby and took a lot. It seemed like the only thing to do at the time. I felt like I didn't have a choice. I was quite calm. I was sure the family would be better off without me. And I was lucky. A farmer came to the field to do some hedging and he found me in time. And that was just the beginning of a process that's still going on now. Claire got me transferred from the French hospital to a psychiatric hospital in the UK where I was sectioned. I was there two and a half months. I'm still taking the drugs three years later. I've done a course of mindfulness training since then as well, which helped a lot. It taught me to focus on one thing at a time, sometimes just my breathing. You can't fret about the bills when you're focused on your breathing. We live back in the UK now. After a year, I started back doing building work again. What's the time? 2.30. Never going to finish this hole all by the end of the day. Have to come back next week. I should have finished this. No trouble this week. Why can't I pace myself properly? No discipline, that's my trouble. No pace. I'm rubbish at this. Whoa. Whoa. Your stomach's twisted right up and your neck's all tight at the back. How many bricks have you laid in your life, eh? You're not rubbish. But if you try to go too fast, you panic and then you slow down like most people. Less haste, more speed, Gimmers Abbey. Can you still cut brick with a trowel? <laughs> yeah. I remember the first time I saw Dad doing it. Like Bruce Lee with a trowel. Ace it was. Lovely bricks, these. Dawkins <coughs> stocks. Lovely mix. Every brick's got a different personality. Come on. I ain't half soaked up the sun. There you go.
Brick's you, Dad. Nice and warm. Pink face. You certainly know how to enjoy life, don't you? Wish I'd in there, we did a bit more of that from you. Learned all sorts from you, though. Never told me how. You just showed me and I taught myself. And now I'm teaching myself to survive. Son didn't reach this brick. Claire's dad. That's who you are. Always the joker, but a cold bugger at heart. And Claire's mum. <laughs> Two cold ones side by side. There you go. Never trusted me. <sighs> Suppose you were worried for Claire, though. Hitching up with me. Suppose I'd be worried if Josie hitched up with me when she was 17. But you always supported us. Shit. All the decorating you paid me for. Well, I couldn't hang wallpaper to save me life. Here's a pink and black one. Huh. There you are, Mum. Black eyeliner and pink lipstick. Remember the food you used to cook when you were having a good day? Blimey. Millionaire shortbread. You'd make a huge tray and let me eat as much as I wanted. And you stuck me so tight it would squeeze the breath out of me. Then one day, you went and stole yourself away from us. That's how it felt at the time. I understand now, though, don't I? You thought you were doing us a favour. Taking yourself off our hands like a, a skip of asbestos. And you couldn't think what it would do to us, because you were just too sad to think at all. I can smell your perfume. Here, Mum. You sit next to Dad. Next one. Perfect cut. Got to be my little Josie. <laughs> Highly strung. That's my fault. I shouldn't pick on you so much, my love. You may be a bit slow at reading, but the genius of that shoebox camper pan. And here's you, young George. Tuck you in next to your sister. That's where you like to be. Sometimes. You're a cheeky little bugger. But interested in the world. My God, what other kid watches yesterday channel? Sense of humour too, which is an achievement in our house. Watching you, watching The Simpsons is funnier than watching The Simpsons. And best of all, there, my darling. This is you, a lovely looking brick with excellent load bearing qualities, but covered on three sides by the three of us. When was the last time I saw you with your camera? Gotta get you taking photos again. You always used to be taking photos. Beautiful photos. So, tonight, Claire, when I get home, you'll be in the kitchen chopping an onion. Josie will be in her room up to her eyeballs in glitter and glue. George will be on the computer hacking out some bunker on Minecraft. I'll go in and there won't be a word. No, had a nice day. Or, nice to see you, love. So I'll go. Come here, right now! And they'll go, why? Their face is a bit white, a bit miserable. And I'll go, because we're going for a pizza, that's why. Yay!
That was two years ago now. I don't know if I'll never get depressed again. I feel like I'd be tempting fate if I said that. I'm still the same me. I still get stressed out. Still have my up days and my down days. But I've got better ways to take care of myself now. And I owe it to Claire and the kids to stick to them. I owe it to myself too, I suppose.